Dear colleagues, welcome to my workplace at Ranaghat, West Bengal, India. Let us observe this totally unedited FACO. This is a cataract with very weak genule as we will see later and the people is not well dilated. Nuclear sclerosis is grade 3 plus. I just checked if the red glow is okay or not. It is okay, but in small people, in not so well dilated people and with another complication like in this case weak genule, it is always better to stain the anterior capsule with tripan blue dye. Here goes the tripan blue dye. This is adrenalin. I used a bit of phenocaine also in this case. Phenocaine contains tropicamide, phenylephrine and lignocaine. I always wash the dye out so that there is uniform uh, dye in the aqueous. If we do not wash the dye out of the anterior chamber, there will be higher concentration of dye at one place and low concentration of dye in another place in the anterior chamber. And that causes some degree of low visibility. I used a sharp needle to raise a capsular tag. Now I hold this capsular tag with this uterator forceps and very gently taking a lot of time I am doing this rexis. I have kept a people expansion device ready and if I need it at any point of time, I will use it. I have got a rexis of about 4.75 millimeter size and this should be okay. Hydrodissection is done at multiple points. and. The anterior chamber is then filled up with visco. And now I bimanually rotate the nucleus. In weak genule, we always, we must always rotate the nucleus with two hooks placed on 80 degree apart. This will cause least stress on the genule. And now my plan is to do direct chop, direct vertical chop and to divide the nucleus into several pieces. So this is the first crack and this is the second crack and I am trying to make many more cracks. I am using 475 millimeter of mercury vacuum, 47 ml per minute flow rate, ultrasonic energy used is 70 percent. In this case, I have kept the bevel sideways towards the right side. I am trying to, because I am trying to use the Feco needle, the tip of the has a wedge so that it goes into the substance of the nucleus easily. This is uh, maybe a bit risky I'm going to periphery, but I had to get on piece free. Once I get it, I emulsify it and then it becomes easier to move the other pieces. So, 
So, this is another piece getting emulsified and this is the third nuclear piece emulsified and this is the fourth one. The people did not constrict to that extent, so that I need a people expansion ring. So, I continued the nucleus is grade 3 or grade 3 plus nuclear sclerosis. So, it is not very hard, but if the nuclear nucleus is grade 4 or grade 5 and the zonule is weak, it is always safer to use a people expansion ring or iris hooks. I am using stereo coaxial illumination at this time. It keeps more depth and the posterior capsule, the position of the posterior capsule can be made out better if I use the stereo coaxial illumination. And now is the time to clean the cortex. I am using a Simco cannula because I can control this instrument much better than a bimanual irrigation aspiration. Automated instruments are on the higher side of risk in complicated cases. But this instrument, the vacuum is in my hand, not in my foot. So, I can control it better. I go through the side port and remove the cortex from 9 o'clock. Now, the cortex from 11 o'clock to 2 o'clock, I do not want to remove this from the main wound. So, I am going to make another wound 90 degree away. If the side port is 90 degree away from the main wound, astigmatism produced by the main wound will be neutralized to some extent by the side port and easily through this new side port, I could remove the cortex from 11 o'clock to 2 o'clock. And now, the intraocular lens is to be implanted. Whenever the situation is tough, the genual is weak, people is getting small, it is always better to use visco for implantation of the intraocular lens and always better to enlarge the main wound a bit so that the cartridge goes inside the capsular bag. This is a B cartridge and I had to enlarge the main wound. The leading haptic goes into the capsular bag and the trailing haptic also goes into the capsular bag. What is this? This is a piece of nucleus which was engaged at the main wound and it was hidden by the arcus senilis. And now the trailing haptic has gone into the capsular bag. And now the nuclear piece is being removed. Since the main wound was enlarged, the nucleus piece came out easily. The size of the main wound is now about 3 millimeter. It was 2.8 millimeter initially. It has been enlarged by about 0.2 millimeter. 
And now is the time to clean Visco. First, I use Simco for some time. Irrigate the entry chamber, irrigate the capsular bag. That means I go behind the intraocular lens and irrigate the capsular bag. Then I aspirate the entry chamber and now come out. About 70 percent visco comes out by these maneuvers. And now I use the bimanual irrigation aspiration. Irrigate for a few seconds, then irrigation and aspiration together. Then I place the irrigating probe behind the intraocular lens. In this case, I did not do that. A bit of moxie is applied. The side port is closed by corneal stromal hydration. The side port at 7 o'clock has been used only once and it does not require any hydration. And now this is the final lavage and formation of the anterior chamber. Then integrity of the wounds are checked by a cotton tipped Johnson Bart. No leakage anywhere from any wound. Few drops of moxie is applied over the ocular surface and the case is concluded. Thank you very much for your attention. Hope this video will help you in developing your surgical skills. It will give you some thoughts how to manage such cases. Be a great surgeon and serve your patients with love, respect, empathy and great surgical competence.